right? A potato is, but doesn't know that it is. The cockroach that I smashed in my kitchen is, but doesn't know, was, but doesn't know that it is. I am and I know that I am, and I am and I know that I know that I am, and I am and I know that I know that I know that I am, and I am and I know that I know that I know that I know that I am. And you can do that uh, until somebody kills you or you get tired of it and pass out. In other words, not only are you aware of your existence, but you're potentially capable of being aware of that and so on. You ever do that to yourself where you're walking down the street, you're like, here I am walking down the street. All right, now here I am thinking about the fact that I'm walking down the street, and now here I am thinking about the fact that I'm thinking about the fact that I'm walking down the street. And then you just cave and sit on a bench for a while and try and think about what to do next. But the, the point that these guys want to make is that self-awareness or self-consciousness is the natural result of a fantastically complex mind. An insect can't be self-aware. They lack a complex brain that would allow that kind of uh, cognitive activity to transpire. Because to be self-conscious means that you metaphorically have to be able to step outside of yourself and, and to imagine yourself, in the words of sociologists, as an object uh, of your own inquiry. But what Kierkegaard said is that the minute you become self-conscious, uh, you necessarily, at least from time to time, experience two very different emotions that Kierkegaard called awe and dread, respectively. Of course, awe is just the root of awesome. You hear that word all the time. That has positive connotations, does it not? What Kierkegaard pointed out is that the reason you'd rather be a person than a potted plant, I hope all of you share my preference in that regard, is that while both of those things, the person and the plant, are alive, only the human being has the sublime privilege of being here and knowing that you're here while you're here. And, and we should not lose track of the magnificent opportunity to be sentient but with regard to the very fact of our own existence. Life rules, and that's important for us to remember. On the other hand, as Kierkegaard pointed out, there's something dreadful Dread sounds like a bad combination of a Grateful Dead and a reggae tune, but uh, right now, uh, what, what other adjectives does the notion of dread conjure up? Yeah, fear. Fear's too mild. Give me something better. Yeah, horror. How about terror? As I was saying this morning when I gave a talk to a class uh, on Mercer Island, uh, when we talk about dread, we mean like fear squared, like a trembling piece <laughs> Uh, of biological protoplasm twitching on the precipice of annihilation. I mean, that's afraid and a little bit more uh, on top of that. Okay, so what is it by virtue of self-consciousness that renders you a, a, a twitching pile of biological protoplasm? Well, according to these folks, there, there's three things uh, that are dreadful that we become aware of simply by virtue of self-consciousness. Thing number one is the central theme of this talk and of your course, and that's, of course, the awareness of our mortality. If you look at the handout that I've given you and just gaze at your leisure course at the Faulkner quote at the top of it, what you'll notice is that the minute you recognize that you exist, Unless you're a child or an idiot, uh, you also must realize that you're not always going to be here. And I hope this isn't news to you, especially in this class. You're all going to die. You know that? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, how many of you have death on your list of things to accomplish today? Anybody got that on your Rolodex of, you know, go shopping, do the laundry, die uh, as one of your things this week, this year? Uh, you're making plans in the immediate future. The point is, is that death is not something that, that sits well with any of us. And, and although we can joke about it or talk about it in an academic venue, but with relative equanimity, the, the claim is that only human beings are explicitly aware of the inevitability of our own demise. And as you'll see, uh, for these folks, it, it is the awareness of death and our emotional reaction to that awareness that is claimed 
to fundamentally influence all human activity. What, what Becker is about to claim is that most of what motivates humans throughout their lives it is, psychologically speaking, our inability to come to terms with the awareness that we won't always be here. That's only part of it, however, because on top of the death thing uh, comes what I'll call tragedy for today, for lack of a better word. Not only are you burdened with the ongoing awareness of the inevitability of your death, but, but you also realize, once again, unless you're a child or an idiot, that you can die at any time for reasons that you could never anticipate or control. And again, not to make light of a terrible situation, but how many of you were uh, reading or looking at the tube about the value jet that went down in the Everglades? Not too big a value for the people that got on that plane. What about the Mount Everest climbers that got blown off the face of the earth? What a downer, right? They're seeing the top of the mountain. 100 mile wind comes up and, and blows you away. What about when you're in California when the entire state gets shaken into the ocean by an earthquake? Or you're in McDonald's and a disgruntled postal worker blows your head off before you finish your sandwich. Get that special sauce all over. Uh, the remains, <laughs> it's cranial pate. Uh, and <laughs> anyway, look, that <laughs> back, back, on, back on track. All right, here's the point though. You know, that was a good one though, <laughs> that was a good one. All right, you, you, you know that, that, that if you're lucky, uh, you get to live to a relatively ripe old age, at which point uh, you will turn into a festering pile of rotting compost to feed the next round of insects, uh, and that's if you're lucky. Uh, but uh, you know that not all of us are that lucky. Uh, in fact, if we meet 10 years from now, statistically speaking, Five of us won't be here, right? 10% is about the approximate mortality rate. I forget where I got that figure, but it sounds good. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah, this guy, any, any matters of fact, uh, check with the doctor. <laughs> I'm the purveyor of hyperbole. But the point is, is that uh, not all of us are gonna keel over from old age. Some of us are gonna go down most tragically and unexpectedly, and we're aware of that. It's not only the awareness of death that discombobulates us, it is in addition the awareness that our death can come at any time. And, and then finally, as Becker points out, and in this regard he's taking his cue from Freud, we also by virtue of self-consciousness recognize that we are fundamentally uh, breathing pieces of defecating meat, not fundamentally superior to either lizards or potatoes. You are an ambulatory assortment of entrails uh, that would look the same when your guts got dumped on the sidewalk as the animals that you see crushed on the road uh, after a rainstorm. You're, you're no different than that. You're spam with a plan, pate with panache. You're a cold cut with an attitude, and, and, and you know that uh, at certain points uh, in your life, and, and that bothers us immensely. I've told this story many times before, uh, but for me, I, I learned about that most poignantly when I was 12 years old and my buddy uh, tackled me in a touch football game, uh, and my leg broke. I heard this snap, and, and I, I, it, I went, oh, that, that was an interesting sound, like kindling. Uh, being broken and then I looked down and I saw that my right foot was at a 90 degree angle to my leg and I'm like I don't remember that and, and then I looked at the other side of my ankle and I saw my bone sticking out and I'm like oh man this is a problem and, and I, I don't think we're gonna be able to get a committee together or like have a bake sale to fix this one that, that I this is when I realized that myself, whatever that means, is ensconced in this physical body uh, that grows old, uh, that is the massive producer of excretory products, and, and that my very existence is dependent on the ongoing annihilation of other forms of life, as Becker points out uh, most poignantly in, in the quote that you've got on your handout. Well, all, all that Becker suggests is that for the average individual, the ongoing awareness that you're gonna die, that it could happen at any time, and that you're a breathing piece of defecating meat would literally render us paralyzed with abject terror 
if we didn't do something about it. In other words, if the only thing you thought about all day is I'm going to die, a rock could fall on my head and crack my fucking skull, and I'm no different than an armadillo, you wouldn't do much. You'd just kind of cower in the corner hoping that uh, you didn't get crushed in the next minute or two. 